uh, and just hearing the facts about having a fishless, uh, fishless, fishless ocean. How about that one? <laughs> uh, in our own li- in our in our lifetimes, yeah. um, possibly if if things continue down the path that they are right now. What is your take from all of the experience that you've? Yeah, I heard something about twenty forty eight, twenty sixty, or something like that for uh, having a fishless ocean. I mean, the numbers are. The numbers are terrifying, right? Just to be totally honest. Yeah. And right now, you know, our, our best guess is that 90% of the fish stocks around the world are either overfished or fished to capacity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the nice thing is fish will keep having fries, by the way, a baby fish is a fry. So mm-hmm. fish will keep having fries, but we have to give them a chance to do so. Yeah. Um, and some fish, uh, specifically like large oceanic fish, they actually get more fertile the older they get. So like one 80 year old tuna could pop out. I don't know the number specific specifically, but she could pop out, you know, exponentially 10, more 10, times egg babies or eggs than a young tuna. Than a younger uh, one. So it they're makes not like it, humans. Yeah. So you yeah. know, humans, we kind of hit a sexual maturity and a peak, and then women in particular go to menopause. You can't have babies anymore. Fish, most fish, fish species don't do that. They just keep going until they die and well, keep getting more and more, and more, and more over yeah. time. Yeah. So. So on one hand, it's yes. I mean, if if we keep fishing at this rate. We are going to fish ourselves out of fish. Like that's just what's going to happen. But um, the amazing thing is, is again to go through, to go for the hope. You know, Philippe and I have seen with our own eyes what nature can do mm-hmm. and what um, what species, if given a chance, if just given a little break, mm-hmm. how quickly they can rebound. Um, we did a, seri- a a documentary for Shark Week a couple years back, and we went to the Bikini Atoll. Um, which is where SpongeBob SquarePants lived, um, but it was—it's uh, where it's in the Marshall Islands, and it's where the U.S. did all of our nuclear testing during the Cold War. Mm-hmm. So we detonated 23 nuclear bombs on this one one little area. Wow. The largest one was called Castle Bravo, the largest nuclear bomb uh, the United States has ever detonated, and total devastation. Like when that bomb went off, everything for miles died: the coral, the fish, the birds. If there are any people in the area. Um, everything was just gone. Um, but we went, we had heard rumors that the, the area was, had a lot of sharks. We were like, that's weird. So we went and that first dive, I can tell you, you know, in knowing science and kind of knowing how nature works in theory, I thought, okay, well, if it's given a chance, it should recover. Mm -hmm. But on that first dive, when our, when we went under the water and we were immediately surrounded by like 60 or 70 gray reef sharks, there were fish that were the size of Philippe. There were giant clams that were like half the size of this table. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. And to think just 60 years prior, it was a dead zone, Mm -hmm. nuclear wasted dead zone. And so people just didn't fish there because they thought it was... So essentially it became a marine protected area, right? It became this idea where it was just set aside. Nobody went there because of the radiation. And in 60 some odd years, it bounced back. And and that was for both of us incredibly inspiring. So to Mm -hmm. answer your question, Ethan, are fish going to be gone out of the ocean by 2050? Is it going to be, or 20, you know, what? that isn't written yet. Mm-hmm. Are we headed in a pretty dire direction? Yeah. Is it foretold that that will happen? No. Um, and that's the good news. The good mm-hmm. news is that we have, we have tools. these tools that work. Yeah. Um, so there's a big push called um, 30 by 30, which I think you guys have, have heard about because mm-hmm. they mentioned it in, in uh, the documentary. Um, but if, if we can kind of protect 30% of our ocean by 2030, or at least get really close to that and not just randomly protect random spots, but figure out the spots that are the most biodiverse, that are the most important, just give those a break. Then the ocean can, it will recover. It can Mm -hmm. recover. Um, and that's, what's so exciting. Like literally that's one of the reasons we're having a second baby, because if it was just like, this is what's happening, we'd have been like, yeah, we're good. We don't need another kid, (laughs) but it's things like this that give us hope. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so many, you know, the United States just signed on. Um, there's so many countries, I think we're up to almost like 60 countries around the world that are really supporting this. And if we can do it, we you can know. we we have a chance at at stopping that yeah. collapse in biodiversity mm-hmm. and yeah. we refuse to not have hope and yeah. and you know if there's anything we we wanted to share today it's this idea that you know, we've talked a lot about the ocean mm-hmm. and a lot of people think that the ocean is removed from them or far away or if they've never been to the beach they don't really care um, or if they live in the middle of the country or on a desert yeah. you know, in a desert yeah they or, think or, that the ocean doesn't really uh, apply to them yeah you yeah. know kids we've worked with here in L A Miami and big cities around the world that live a couple miles from the ocean and have never been. So uh, 
from inland to coastal pe people that just don't think the ocean matters. Our message is the ocean matters every single day to every single person on this planet, a source of oxygen and food and opportunity and trade and economic growth and carbon absorption. And, and so one of the problems we face in, in the world in the, this conversation has been the ocean is oftentimes like an afterthought. Mm -hmm. And so if we're going to solve these problems that we face in climate change, biodiversity loss, all these things. I mean, let's remember climate change is an ocean problem because yeah. the ocean regulates our climate. Yeah. Because the ocean is warming up from trapping greenhouse gases, the currents are changing. The, 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 the relationship between cold and hot, which is essentially what drives weather, is changing. That's why we're having extreme mm -hmm. weather. That's why we're having extreme storms. That's why the world is changing because the ocean is changing because it's getting hotter. Mm -hmm. So we can't solve these problems unless we elevate the ocean to the center of the conversation about conservation. Yeah. We cannot have a thriving planet without a thriving ocean, mm -hmm. period. Yeah. People, again, think Amazon, they think forests, and those are all very important, and they forget ocean. Ocean should be the first thing that yeah. we talk about, and that's really our mission, is to like help elevate these issues. People understand that the ocean matters to them every day.